Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Crass and Class Podcast. I'm Ivory TV, and this is my co-host, Dapper Chap. This week, we're going to be going over IGN's uh, top 100 list. We're going to be starting at number 50 and working our way down, just kind of going over all overall uh, thoughts on their top list. Good evening, everybody. I'm Dapper Chap, of course, as Ivory mentioned previously. Uh, a new decade coming out. It's been an incredible, incredible decade for gaming overall. And yeah, IGN put out their top 100 list of all time. It was a list that Ivory and I kind of agreed on because we were we we're actually having a, a fairly kind of heated debate regarding <laughs> some of the games. And, and we have very, very different tastes on some things and very, very yes. similar tastes on others. So we thought this would be a good kind of like just quote unquote discussion uh, <laughs> argument <laughs> of uh what is what was good uh, of this decade and uh you know of or ign's version of all time like i mean we're everybody's gonna have their own top 10 50 100 game list but this seems to be what we talked about was more objective than most that we could come across at least had the most eclectic range so uh that's where we're gonna start so, so we're gonna start with number 50 because trying to do all 100 in an hour like that gives you like what one a minute yeah it'd be pretty quick <laughs> less than one every 30 seconds <laughs> but kind of so, like what you said before though like and for everybody we were kind of like talking the other night and i ran we happened to run into this list and we were going through things and we got a little bit heated on <laughs> some of the stuff on the list we were going for like 20 minutes I was like you know what this would just be a good discussion so it really in, like, in, you know, we're just gonna <laughs> in general, I think a lot of it, though, guys, from what we'll be looking at, we kind of look at the overall impact as far as what the games are. I think that's one thing that me and him were kind of sticking close to me and uh, Crispy or Dapper, sorry. And then uh, we were going off of that pretty much and we'll kind of go down the list. But go ahead. Uh, so we're gonna start with 50 which is overwatch uh so i think this is actually a good spot for overwatch in the middle because while its predecessor like uh really stepped the genre forward which was team fortress 2 like it, it team fortress 2 created the hero genre like you played unique characters unique classes that had unique things and like you know you had the heavy and medic you had the, the sniper the demo man and there were characters that had life like they weren't like the old original team fortress where you know yes you had the classes but there was no real life to the characters mm. it kind of created a narrative which was nice because i remember sitting and watching the team fortress 2 videos like meet the sniper and it was one of the <laughs> funniest videos i had ever seen like hands down or meet the demo man uh, there it just mm, it's poetry in motion <laughs> So it started the whole hero, the hero genre, and like you know, even you had capture the flag modes. Yeah, there's a lot of flavor. But in Overwatch, they cr created kind of an overarching story. This was their influence originally, I believe, with Project Titan, which is what was uh, Overwatch's previous name. They were going to do like an MMO MOBA style kind of game, and then as they got closer and closer, they just kind of scrapped it and moved on. Uh, give me a second here. My headset actually died. It's high-paced action. Second. There's, you know, depth from characters. Uh, there, there's each character has its own distinct personality. It's just a good time. Now, with every, you know, the community. My, my headset and, died. Yeah. Well, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna keep going. Good the stuff. It can be toxic because it's a competitive gaming. You know, that's something you do have to watch out for in competitive gaming in general. People like to win. People hate to lose. But. People also like to bring people down if they feel they're not performing. Toxic you know, people like, in video games do not lie to me. Woo! Come on, there's not that does not happen. <laughs> I do declare, sir, you are lying to me. You are a straight fever. <laughs> but uh, so that's how I feel regarding it. Like Overwatch, this is a good middle ground. Overwatch created a lot of new oomph to a genre that was kind of dying. Like there wasn't any new innovation in it. So I feel it's a good step in the right direction. So uh, you know, for me, it, it it's deserved on the middle of the road. Yeah, I agree. And I think as far as on on number 50, you know, I think it's a pretty impactful game, at least as far as the overall market as well. And you see a lot of uh, we're Overwatch. You can see the release date there of 2016. I think a lot of it is the, the overall impact on the scene was for esports. And that's what I really like to kind of see. You know, you literally have like Mark Cuban, for instance, like purchasing an actual team, like, you know, like actually running an organization like that's cool to me. And it, it's you talk about like big time investors and all these business savvy people who are actually, you know, getting on board with it. And, you know, Overwatch is kind of the stepping stone there that I've, at least that I've seen for like big time names kind of getting into it. Obviously, you know, there's still other games that have had their overall markets and, you know, big time people, but it's just interesting kind of seeing that overall background and a game being able to be the pinnacle of that and being able to kind of, you know, jumpstart that as far as like a multi-billion dollar industry. 
Well, it's kind of, and you, you touched on it, and it's important for the esports aspect of it because, like, League of Legends kind of started that train. Mm-hmm. With start pulling in some of, like, then you have Rick Fox, who owns Echo Fox. Yep. You know, you, you mentioned, uh, I forget his name already. Uh, sorry. Mark Cuban. A, Mark Cuban. Yep. But, like, uh, now you also, with Overwatch, have the Overwatch League and actual, like, sport, quote unquote, teams that are representative of cities and yeah. different locales within the country. I didn't think about that. That's like, actually cool. Yeah. I, yeah, thought, I forgot yeah, about the, that. Dallas Fuel, the the London Spitfire, mm-hmm. the you know uh, Shanghai Dragons, like all of those. It's cool to have that kind of identity and somebody you can root for if they're from your home country or hometown or things of that nature. I don't know if Overwatch League is going to continue being big. It feels like it's kind of lost steam, but we can't ignore the impact that League of Legends and and uh, you know Overwatch have had in the esports community and bringing to light that video games can be profitable. Exactly. For investors. Yeah, I think that's kind of, and that's a good point too, as far as on the overall like uh, breakdown, as far as on the actual hometown stuff, because you know, like you know, Seattle Seahawks and Kansas City Chiefs stuff like that. I guess kind of cool, like whenever you actually start bringing it into life, you know, it's like your own hometown favorites and kind of things of that nature. So, but generally, yeah, uh, Overwatch fifty. I think we're both in agreement with that one there. So number forty nine here with Deuce X. It's what Deus X. Come on now. Deuce X. <laughs> Deus X. I've always called it Deuce X. It's Deuce. <laughs> what, are you going to the bathroom afterwards? What? Yes, on, I am. Deuce X. Deus X is one of the earliest games to ever be licensed under uh, the Unreal Engine games. And it is a cyberpunk, like, futuristic horror kind of style game. Um, you know, it, it's it eventually evolved into Deus Ex, was it Human Revolution and uh, Ex Machina and things of that nature. It became an open cyber, it, it's cyberpunk before cyberpunk became a thing. Like that was really cool. It had deep uh, RPG aspects and things of that nature. Now it didn't really, um, you know, push the genre forward, but it was an intriguing concept having cyberpunk because cyberpunk is a unique genre of fantasy that and sci-fi that it's not really delved into a whole lot like we're gonna get cyberpunk 2077 this year it's gonna i feel it's gonna blow the water you know the walls off of uh gaming in general so just so i understand because mm-hmm. i remember playing this game a little bit and i wasn't like super into it yeah. but cyberpunk was is that's where this came from cyberpunk didn't come from so it, that's the, its own thing right like you're just saying as far thing, as like yeah, yeah okay because i remember this game and i thought it was really bad to cyberpunk be completely honest it's actually technically the genre of yeah of sci-fi that they're yep. going with here. I get you. So it's a really, you know, it touches a lot of the, at least the newer ones, it touches a lot on like segregation and uh, racism, like cybernetics versus non-cybernetics and things of that nature. I don't think it pushes the genre forward. Like it's, it's. This kind of on spin. Game. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's an impactful game in its own right. An impactful, like a set of RPG and action kind mm-hmm. of thing, but it doesn't, uh, it's kind of like the Mass Effect thing where you have multiple trees you can go down and talking and things of that nature. So it lends itself to a little bit of replayability in that regard and trying out new things. But overall, like, I feel like it was Assassin's Creed before Assassin's Creed, if that makes sense. Plus some, like, Mass Effect. It's probably pretty fair. And and in general, so, I think that's good. And I know that me and you have our differences as far as on what we like in video games. That's the same thing as, like, Assassin's Creed never resonated with me. Same thing that this game didn't. Like, I don't know. I just, like, a... For me, 49, that's really high, to be completely honest. I mean, I'd maybe... Like, I, I get that it's a big game and hat has kind of a big following. Or not, well, probably not anymore, but you get what I mean. Like, like it, it, at least, like, kind of the childhood for a lot of people. But sure. I don't know. Maybe maybe not 49. Like, this is a top 100 list when we're just going off the top 50, but maybe somewhere up near uh, me, 70s, me it's 80s. Around it's around the middle of the pack for me. It's okay. still good and impactful. Maybe not for you, but for me, it's still middle of the road. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Our first argument, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Our argument. All right. This game, I already saw this before we even got started. I did not play this game. I don't know anything about this. Baldur's Gate 2 Shadows of Om. Um, I actually um, haven't played anything. I, play, I, played it, I haven't played it either. I played some Baldur's Gate games. So did you ever play Icewind Dale? Did you ever play, um, God, what are some other ones? Any of the D&D isometric games that came out? probably in the early 2000s a very tiny bit but again that's just wasn't really my style for the most part so i get what you're yeah. saying though like that's the kind of that's what this was kind of based off i mean kind of the same not based off of it but same rpg yeah, type of thing like you can spend upwards of probably anywhere between three and five hundred hours in these games like these are deep immersive role-playing 
style games where you have a lot of freedom in creating like parties and classes and you know again still things you know doing dialogue uh actions that may be swayed depending upon your classes and whatnot and ew is wanting to say hi say hello to the people in tv man <laughs> now you need to go away Itty. um <sighs> but uh <laughs> it's one of those things where you could spend a lot of time just traipsing around and, and soaking in the atmosphere Okay. Um, and really enjoying uh, you have to enjoy a slow burn these are very slow burn games you're going to take a lot of time, a lot of exploration a lot of like uh, turn based combat ca- that kind of thing, so I don't know if that's going to be your cup of tea or not But for me, so the right big thing, game. again I have no take on this one 48, too high <laughs> well, ask I mean, if you, hey I'm just asking, I don't know uh, middle of the road, it's, it was impactful in the RPG genre you're talking about all time. We're not talking about just lit. Like, this is all time. Top 50 right. games all time? Yeah, I agree. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Okay. It's like, I don't have a take, so I just wanted to get the full, the no, full here. Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. It'll be, it'll be there. <laughs> all right. 47. Miss Pac-Man. I'm Go cool. Start this one. I'm cool with 47. <laughs> I think it should be higher, in really? my opinion. I think pa- Pac-Man, I get it. If it's if Pac-Man's further down in this list, say, like, guys, we didn't look at the whole entire list starting out. So we want to kind of keep it... Uh, organic here as far as on how we're talking about it but if pac-man's further down sure that's okay but if it's just based off of like miss pac-man you're talking about like that's probably one of the most iconic games that everybody our age and older than us like everyone knows what pac-man is like that's just it's a very well-known game in the first place and to me i'm not saying like you know holy smokes yeah obviously it wasn't based off graphics or anything it was made in 1982 like come on but <laughs> You know, even even just the, like, when we go, so we're from Iowa anyways, but there's a, a gaming bar um, so that we, we like to go to. And we literally will go there, and every single time, we will go play in Pac-Man. It's like a four-man Pac-Man, and it's a blast. I always have fun with it. So I don't know. I I think, honestly, it should be higher in the list, unless Pac-Man's in. Like, that's fine. Like, I get that. Like, if Pac-Man's just further down the list, and that's the point, then sure. But I think it should be higher than 47. Uh, I mean, Pac-Man is was one of the gold standards of gaming yeah. way back in the day. Like, what's interesting about like Miss Pac-Man comparatively, and I didn't know if you knew this or not, and I don't even know if they mentioned it in the article, but like, you can actually you can't use like Pac-Man had standardized patterns for the ghosts and how they traveled and things of that nature, so you can actually learn the movements and kind of play around that. Play around that. Yeah. So, but Miss Pac-Man didn't. Like, it was actually semi-random, like, and how they would move and things of that nature. I did not so know that, added, actually. It added a, a different level of, like, difficulty to it, which was kind of cool. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you're talking about people who spent, like, I don't know how many hundreds of dollars in arcades playing Pac-Man. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it is the progenitor of gaming as we know it in arcades and, and leading to home consoles. Like, I mean, you can say, you know, whatever you want about the Atari 2600, Pong, freaking, you know, Missile Command and all of those. But it mm-hmm. wasn't until the arcade, like, Pac-Man and Galaga and Centipede and things of that nature that really brought it forward Mm -hmm. saying like this is what we're capable of and it's only gonna get better in the future yeah no this is a very impactful game on gaming in general uh middle of the pack probably not i'd put it in the top third if i was gonna put it anywhere like you maybe the top 20 30 yeah Um, okay yeah i agree with that not like super uh, not like yeah not a top 10 i don't think but yeah higher than this i think i think this is a little bit of a i don't know i think it's a misunderstanding i guess as far as i'm packing this isn't yeah, this is a subjective list from IGN. So whoever wrote this list got input from people around him and like yeah. kind of. They could they could have been younger together. too. They, I mean, honestly, yeah, they could have been they, twenty twenty one just came out of college and writing it. I don't know exactly. So, Neither do I, to be but, honest with you. But I still feel that Miss Pac Man should be higher on that list, or Pac Man in general. Yeah, like, that's why I said if Pac Man's down there, I'm cool. That's whatever. I was just saying, like that's what I'm noting is if Miss Pac Man's forty seven, there Pac Man's not on there. That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> <Fair enough. laughs> All right. Next one. CS 1.6. Oh, uh, memories. Holy crap. All right. I'm so, surprised that this is so low. I am too. Because honestly, Counter Strike, like, I feel it's at the gate, like the bar for, well, and it says specifically 1.6, which to me wasn't the best of the Counter Strikes. But that that's um, my own take. I think 1.5 was the crim of the crop of counter-strike like i remember sitting it when uh land gaming centers were very first coming out going to a pc land gaming center spending like 20 bucks for a day 
and from literally from 9 a.m. to like yeah, just playing CS. I was playing CS. That's literally all See, I did from ages 18 to 20. I can agree like, from the competitive standpoint. I agree 1.5 was better. And I, I'm solely there. I'm, I'm with you. 1.6, though, I think is where everything started to resonate as far as with everybody that it's like the FPS at the time, like to me. Yes. Like, and that's what everyone was wanting to play as 1.6. So I think as far as the overall impact on the scene and on FPSs as a whole, because I think Halo Halo 1 came happens. out in 2001. No, Halo 1 yeah. came out in 2001, but it didn't have traction. Okay. 1.6, 2003. 2003? So, yeah, yeah, 1.6 was 2003. Uh, First-person shooters and consoles were never heard of. Yes, that's what I was saying. So Halo CE Combat Evolved came out in 2001. I remember it because I played it on a 13-inch tube silver TV. That's what I was playing. I was like, I was like, I was like, hey guys, uh, uh, what's up? Ten-year-old nerdy Ivory hanging out, just like just playing, playing away, playing Halo CE. Kill a small child. That's what I mean. Like, yeah, console FPS, yes, was not a thing, and I think CS 1.6 was kind of the that's where it started at with FPS as I started becoming huge. That's why I say I, I'm surprised that it's this low. Like, I, I feel like that would be higher. But then again, it just depends on how you're looking at it too. Maybe they're looking at it from the standpoint that the CS 1.6 specifically, because if you're looking at it from a CS series, then it definitely should be a lot higher. But just 1.6, right, like, maybe okay, I guess. I, but I, I, yeah, I just one point. I I don't know why they chose 1.6. I get what you're coming from with the whole like it was a a, a better ex, probably experience overall, and probably probably resource wise it was smoother. But 1.5, it felt more natural and yeah. it was competitively it felt better and more balanced. Yep, like I agree. 1.5 to me was if i had to say something it, it's it was a comfort food like i would i could go back and play hours of it and not have a problem and i didn't feel salty about it overall yeah because it felt fair you yeah. know what i mean like it, it was a good time and it was purely like skill based but yeah mm -hmm. i spent god knows how much money because i didn't own a pc at land gaming centers playing counter-strike because it was my <laughs> bread and butter yeah the only other one that would be more pen impactful probably would be quake and i'm just actually kind of surprised it's not here so far but um, we'll see. I mean, it could be higher. I say, yeah, as far as further in the list, Left for Dead Two. Okay, okay. So, Left for Dead is a cool franchise. We're right? about like, to completely disagree. I can already tell. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. You, know you go first. Yeah. All right. So, I like Left for Dead. Left for Dead, I thought uh, was an amazing franchise. Like the concept of having uh, a four-man team trying to survive zombie hordes with unique zombies and things of that nature was very cool. And this was before we got into the super saturation of zombie games in general. Because let's face that's it, that's right fair. Now, okay, 2009 starting it. Okay, all right, I'm with you there. Okay, okay, it, like th we didn't. There wasn't that super saturation. You had like what Resident Evil probably it was the only other real zombie game out there at the yeah. time. I wouldn't even consider that really a zombie game. Yeah, and it was. It was like but... first person shooter. It was. Yeah, you know, it was a third person action RPG. Yeah. Um, so Left 4 Dead created a new genre in that regard. Like it took the FPS, it took the survival, and it took like an arcadey kind of platform. And threw it all together and it actually just worked like it was a lot of fun i played a lot of original left 4 dead left 4 dead 2 left a little bit to be desired overall like i figured left 4 dead should have taken this rather than left 4 dead 2 because of the impact left 4 dead had comparatively to the two mm. people played two because they liked one let's be real here um two added more zombies and more unique zombies i think two, two i think added. was the online play i think it's probably Correct. where it's coming the from really really what it was yeah like you could play as the zombies and mess somebody's day up. Yeah. That was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's not quite a feeling of going as a, you know, spawning as a tank, throwing people <laughs> around and clubbing them and just making their lives miserable. Or, you know, playing a smoker and shooting your tongue out and choking some poor lag about that was behind the rest of the team. <laughs> like, that was fun. That was, you know, it, it was kind of trolly, but yeah. it was fun. Um, so Left 4 Dead, I think, is a, a good game. I, I would put it in the middle here. I think it didn't push any boundaries, but it definitely created the whole um first person shooter versus mode like asynchronous kind of gameplay you know what i mean you mm -hmm. had like it was multiplayer but not really able to play and you're playing kind of playing your own game versus the opponent i liked it i thought it was good all right so here's the here's our first one i completely disagree <laughs> <laughs> no okay the only thing i would say is if i don't so this is weird for me i think 45 is too high for this game and the other two games i'm about to bring up here 
I don't think that they should be this high anyways. But my point is, is that these other two should be ahead of Left 4 Dead, in my opinion. But again, I don't think that they should be like 30 or anything like that. The like Left 4 Dead should be like 100, and then these would be like 85, 90, whatever you want to kind of call it. Okay. Dead Island and Dying Light. Dying Light. I love those games way more than Left 4 Dead series, hands down. Dying Light, I thought was very intriguing, and it took a spin as far as on an overall zombie survival game, and I really liked the aspect of that game. As far as from the, the, the overall parkour thing, I thought that was really ingenious as far as how they like spun that and actually made it into something as far as a game, because I've never experienced that in a game before, and I still have yet to since. Just that open world feel, because you have a lot of open world games, but that game felt open world to me, and I thought that was cool. No, I, I, Dying Light, I will agree with. Like, Dying Light took the zombie genre and kind of elevated it. Yeah. Dead Island is trash. What the actual... I man? love Dead that, Island. That, that Dead is Island was so much thing. better than Left 4 Dead. So, oh. but keep in mind, I'm not talking about, like, all the fighting as far as, on like, the online gameplay of, like, you said, like, playing as a zombie, stuff like that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just the straight-up campaign. I love Dead Island. I did not like Left 4 Dead. I thought Left 4 Dead was very choppy. I didn't like anything as far as on the overall combat of it. I, I thought it was really weird, honestly. And Dead Island just stuck with me, and I had a lot of fun playing Dead Island. And I even played through like a multiple times on Dead Island, going back and playing it. Left 4 I, Dead. I mean, I, so you like? Uh, so you like the taste of feces? I mean, like that. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I don't know. I did not. I did not get into Left 4 Dead. I did right, not. I mean, like, I don't know. Uh, uh, but Dead Island is a single player game. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. No, it was multiplayer. Was multiplayer was it? Was it? Yeah, because I played with my buddies. Like, I played with my friends. So keep that in okay. mind that I didn't. I didn't play a single player. Left 4 Dead. I did play single pl single player. I didn't play with my friends. I, I tried that out by itself. So maybe, maybe I'll even put that with an asterisk. I agree. I still think Dying Light's better. So no matter what. I'll put a maybe on the asterisk of of uh, Dead Island that maybe I was just having more fun because I was playing with my friends. Possible. Okay. I don't okay. know. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. Playing with friends does usually make most games better. Yes. Because you have somebody to bounce off of and, you know, have fun with. You can even mock yep. the game with together. Yep. You know and what I, I mean? And it becomes fun at that point. Yeah. And I never played it solo. Game. Even the times I came back like six months later, you know, I, we played through it again. I still played it with my friends. So I, I never did play a solo. So maybe that's the reason. Maybe that just sort of stuck with me just because it was a fun game that we, me and my buddies played. But All right. All right. I don't know. I Either way, Left 4 Dead, way too high, I think. I uh, think I it should think be high. It, I don't, it or should lower. Be, I would put it around the 70-ish mark. Yeah. If I was going to mention yep. something. But, okay. All right. Next Moving one. Down. Earthbound. Ooh, Ness. This, this <laughs> should be much friggin' higher. <laughs> this, this should be top 10. I'm, I'm honestly surprised where you're talking about this game as far as in coming into 44. Yeah, 44? that's... I feel like this should be a lot higher. This needs to be a lot higher. This this is empirically wrong. I'm sorry. This is wrong. I'm not saying top ten. I'm not saying top ten. Top top. I don't. I'm not saying top ten. I think top twenty five. Top twenty. Uh, that's right. where I would say like setting it at. You're talking about like you're talking about best games of all time. Yes. Maybe not. But okay. Let, let's go into this. Let's not get segued here. Earthbound. Right, so like so yeah, Earthbound. Um, you take control of kids who have psychic powers. Uh, the main character is Ness, uh, you know, without getting too far in detail, it is a very charming game. It's a little loopy and out there, but you don't, what's cool is you don't kill anybody. You, um, you break them out of a, basically a psychic slumber, basically is what you're doing. You wake them up mm -hmm. from what they're doing because they're being possessed by an entity. Um, you know, spoiler alert, this game's also been out since I was, uh, 13. <laughs> spoiler from 1995, guys. Right? <laughs> sorry. So, sorry. <laughs> um, this there was so much depth and charm and the story was good. The characters were relatable and fun. Like it was just the pinnacle of JRPG. Like there was nothing sweeter. I, you know what this game goes for on eBay? I, I have you ever looked this up? Four bucks. I don't know. No, sir. Is it actually expensive? Without, without booklet and without case, this game alone goes for 150 to 200 dollars. Oh my God. If it is complete in box, you will pay upwards of a thousand dollars. It is that rare of a JRPG and that good of a game. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I did not know that those fetch yeah, that much value, so I guess. It is a, it's just so good. And the American game came with literally the walkthrough guide, like the old Nintendo Power style, mm. with scratch and sniff stickers in the back for things God. in the game. Like, it was just a joy. The, I, 
Okay, so I'm a fat man, all right? And I'm not ashamed to admit this. I played this game while eating a tub of chocolate frosting on graham crackers while playing it, all right? Graham Ooh. crackers and chocolate frosting? See, I'm not yes. judging you for the for what it is, but I'm just judging Ooh. you a little bit for the combination. <laughs> That's kind of it's weird. So good. <laughs> um, but it is the best JRPG I've ever played, will ever play, uh, hands down. If you have not played this, if you can get an emulator and play it, if you can play it on the Switch, play it. I swear you will not regret it. All right, but chat, as far as on comment below, chocolate frosting and graham crackers, like, <laughs> come on, somebody, that hey, feels no, weird. No. I don't know. Don't you hate, sir. <laughs> All right, number 43. If you like, put them in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> number 43, Resident <laughs> Evil. <laughs> Resident Evil. Uh, Resident Evil needs to be higher on this list, too. It needs to be in, like, the top 20. I, like... I agree from the standpoint of impactful, and I understand everyone really likes this series. I don't like Resident Evil. I don't get it. I don't understand so, the hype. I, if you're going to blast me in the comments for chocolate and graham crackers, I don't even want to see what's going to happen to you in the comments for over Resident Evil. I don't know. I just like, I don't, I'm not saying it's a bad game. I Resident just Evil don't understand it. Genre, as far no, as concerned. Like, it brought I get you. And I agree with the impactful. I, j I started with that. I started. I no. said it's a very impactful it's game. And I agree. <laughs> I agree where it's, at, where it's at on the list. I'm not even disagreeing. Like, you know, like with, for instance, like Left 4 Dead, I think it should be much higher. I'm not even saying, or not higher, but lower on the list. Right. How do you want to say that? You know, you know what I mean? But Resident Evil, I agree with you. I think it should be higher from what I understand and hear from everybody else. But... I didn't play the whole entire series. I played some of the games. I just couldn't get into it. I don't know. It was I mean, just weird for me. I'm not a horror fan. Like, I, I, from the, as, I'm not even a horror fan. I hate horror games. I have clips and clips of me basically crapping my pants live in front of a people. But, like, <laughs> it's one of those things where I, I can appreciate the puzzle aspect, the RPG aspect, the, the fact that it brought horror to mainstream. Like, it, it was an all-encompassing game. It did it incredibly, did it incredibly well. It scared the crap out of me. I didn't play them at all, hardly at all when I was a kid. I think like, maybe that's my problem. I don't like any... It's not the fact I don't like horror games because I, cause I'm afraid of them and I don't like to play them. I've tried them. I yeah. literally just don't get scared of horror games. I, I've never had problems with them. And even horror movies. Like, I literally... Like, me and my dad, when we were younger, like, when we, we used to go to the movies quite a bit anyways. And when there was nothing else to watch, we would go watch, like, a horror movie. Like, The Conjuring. I remember that one specifically. We went and watched that one. And we literally just laughed at the conjuring i did not understand it's just like but i don't believe in that stuff i guess so it's just weird for me i, I mean, guess you don't necessarily have to for me like okay so if we're going on the scary like take real quick as a, as a segue to that but like um i when i first watched saw the movie you know the very first saw movie i screamed like a teenage girl when that pig-headed freak came out of the closet when that dude was snapping <laughs> pictures with the flashbulb and then the I then I started laughing at myself, and then you know the movie wasn't scary. Yeah. But like the concept of somebody it, of it being real, you know what I mean? The concept of like that feasibly could happen, you know what I mean? It's I not thought a possibility. I think as far even in Saw, like, I, like as far as not too, too off subject here, but I think it's interesting to think of it from the standpoint psychologically that it can happen, and I'm not afraid of that happening. It doesn't bother me. Like I just don't feel like it's gonna happen. Like it's just it's just interesting. I like to think of it in that way. So it, it never bothers me. On this guy. No, no, no. It's not because I get jump scared. That happens. Like I'm not gonna, like I'm like everybody else. You know, I can I can get jump scared. Something pops out. Like I have clips of from playing Outlast. You know, I wasn't afraid oh, of the game, yeah. but something pops out. It's like oh shit, <laughs> pee your pants a little bit. You're like what the fuck. <laughs> But as far as like just things that like you know the things that are like you know people don't sleep with the like lights off stuff like that you know like just because they're afraid of whatever it's like that I just that doesn't stick with me or like it just doesn't bother me I guess I don't know yeah that's so, fine. I, I, I feel like Resident Evil should be a little bit higher I think it should be in the top thirty or twenty yep. I think it is far more impactful than forty like, I top I top twenty five as far as on everybody else that I've seen I see a lot of people streaming it a lot of people playing it and it's impacted a lot of people as far as on the overall series. I agree much higher again me personally i just don't like the game but i don't know fair enough diablo 2 42 really Four, no that game needs to be higher too that needs to be in the top 20 it kind of set the mark for all i am RPGs. curious of what's in this top 20 like really because yeah, like here. some of these are really weird like they're uh, that's something odd something is definitely off but there I mean, this is all time so it's taking games from like 
the 70s forward so it's got to be a big list like okay all right that, you know but yeah diablo 2 needs to be higher too as diablo far as i'm concerned everyone played the piss out of this game seriously even if you didn't like arpgs yeah. you played diablo 2 like, hey do you want to grind for hours on end to try and find an item with <laughs> exact priority slots of course sign me up guys diablo 2 is my thing it was the MMO before MMOs. Like, <laughs> seriously. All jokes aside, like, this game was, like, it was just, it was never ending. I think that was the fun thing is just because there was always something to get that was just a little bit better, and that's what kind of kept your drive. And I really like that about the Diablo series in general for as far as on, I played a lot more Diablo 3 myself, actually, and Diablo 2 is better, and I understand that. But, I mean, I just kind of like that overall feeling, you know, that you, there's always something to improve on. I think that was more of, like, my competitive thing, you know, just kind of stuck with me. Just like, oh, I can get something just this much better to make my character that much better. But it, it, Yeah, it's well, again, Diablo and Diablo 2 set the whole ARPG slash, like, loot uh, kind of firework kind of thing. Like, yeah. Borderlands to, you know, things off of the loot pinata kind of style of gameplay. And the grinding didn't feel bad. Like the gameplay kept you engaged enough to want to make you want to grind to get the item or to get items of equivocal value to trade to people to get the mm. item. Yeah. Diablo 3, you can't even really trade per se. Like you can't sell items per se or anything like that. Like, you could kind of trade. It was like if you found it in the same run, you could drop it for somebody and then Right. Yeah, but that's about it. And like, but like in Diablo 2, you had Stones of Jordan, which were the currency of the day. Like, if you found a Stone of Jordan, you yeah. used that as currency on top of whatever you're trading. It was just, it was a self fulfilling marketplace, and it was very, very good. It, it, Diablo 2 still holds up to this day. It, it, it as far well, as I'm concerned, I, it beats three. Even one of our close friends, AFK Hero, like, he still plays yeah. Diablo 2. <laughs> Dude, that like, literally, he still plays it to this day. Like, it's just, like, but that's cool. I mean, it's just like, that's fun. Like, it's that it sticks with people for that long. Like, Plays it over Diablo three. He he doesn't like Diablo three. So. <laughs> I did not know this, and I just kind of looked at the the articles. Like the Guinness Book of World Records in two thousand awarded Diablo the fastest PC game selling after it sold a million copies in two weeks. That's did how not know popular that. this game was. That's cool, actually. I did not know that. Neither did I. <laughs> Very good. And how can you say no to the cow level? Honestly, cow level awesome. <laughs> more cowbell. <laughs> yeah, no, I, need, I need all the cowbell. <laughs> Number forty one, Starcraft. Boy, Blizzard is making a mark on history. Let's be real here. All right, StarCraft. Did you play? Did you play a lot of? RPGs? I played. I played a decent chunk of StarCraft. My brother was huge into it. Him and actually AFK here, same person. They played a lot of StarCraft. I played it. I enjoyed the campaign. Even to the day, like I still dabble. Like I'll get on Dark StarCraft two once in a while and just kind of play, just kind of mess around. I'm not competitive about it or anything, obviously. <laughs> It's so weird. 41? I don't know. I'm not sure if I agree with it or disagree with it. I don't know. I don't know either, honestly. I uh, StarCraft is an amazing game. Period, paragraph, end of sentence. It, it uh, jump-started the RTS, competitive RTS kind of uh, idea as well. I remember okay. All right. um, setting with uh, my buddies and just... Uh, this is when you had to lug entire towers and, like, CRT monitors yeah. and... Dude, you packed a hundred pounds worth of crap to go to your buddies to put a land together. All right, Man. you you just convinced me that I'm okay with this and that maybe it can be higher. Actually, that exact thing because it kind of throws me back to okay. So when I went to MLG events and I used to play Halo competitively for anybody who didn't know, but in general, my sponsor at the time um, he was friends with Naniwa, and if you don't know who Naniwa is, he was a professional StarCraft player. But in general, very nice guy in the first place. I don't know if he still plays. I don't really follow the scene too much anymore. But very nice guy in the first place, and he was just kind of talking to us and explaining different things as we were watching the match, because I was watching Idra and somebody else. Uh, Idra was a uh, third player. But literally, this game, I was watching, and like they, he sent a drone over to scout just to look at some stuff, and they killed the drone, and the crowd freaked the fuck out. <laughs> I mean, everyone freaking out. I mean, in Halo, when we were playing in that, you had, like, main stage, like, win Game 7 of the finals, like, and these people were freaking out more about this drone kill than winning Game 7. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't get it. I didn't understand. And he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, well, the economy is like, yeah, you basically, like, 200 gold here, like, and basically just stifled his overall production line. I'm like, okay. Yep. And I was like, but why is that so, like, freak out worthy? But, like, it was little things like that. I okay, I'm cool. It can maybe be higher because if it can bring that much hype behind it, maybe I don't understand it. Yes, same thing like what I said in Resident Evil. But that kind of hype, that's cool. And I it even gave me like goosebumps whenever like watching it and I had no idea what the fuck was going on. 
I'll try and give a brief, like, quick synopsis of what you're talking about and why it didn't make sense to you. Like, because I'm stupid. Start... Yeah, thanks. No, not because, <laughs> <laughs> not because you're stupid, because you I already don't understand the hype behind it. Yeah. You, somebody sent a drone, which is a basic unit that you use for producing minerals or whatever currency you're using to build your bases and stuff. It is dangerous to use it as a scout because it takes up a pr production slot, as well as it's something you use to build and or harvest materials. Using it to scout and it gets killed hurts your production badly. It puts you behind the curve. So your well, opponent has a better economy at that point. I understand what okay. happened. I don't understand why that's so much hype. Uh, for a crowd to freak out. Like, I guess, I don't know. I think of, like, big team fight and they wipe the, like, you know, like, 150 units worth of an army. But, like, that was, like, the hype that I expected. I don't know, man. It was different. But I'm cool. 41, yeah. maybe even higher. 41's fine. Yeah, for, I, I think StarCraft is an amazing game. It deserves its spot on the yep. list. Very paragraph in the sentence. Wow. Yeah. Or Blizzard. What? <laughs> More Blizzard. I feel this one should be higher, too. <laughs> 40? 40 seems low for World of War. Why? Yeah. Why is this not in the top 10? I don't know. Because this game blew the doors off of MMOs. This game blew the doors off of anything. It did. The highest grossing MMO ever to, to grace the presence of the market. Like, that's weird to me 40 top 10 40 at least odd. yeah i would even say maybe top five it, i mean you're talking about like you know yeah. super mario world and stuff like that like i get it i mean like there's other games maybe not top five but like at least top 10 i yeah. do not understand that i think as far as on even when you talk about just the aspect of vanilla wow coming back out and everyone freaking out about that that has to move volumes as far as on what the scene was like and how much everyone was into this game. I literally, guys, I had an interview from a job that I work now. He literally talked to me about World of Warcraft and playing his Shadow Priest. This was during the interview. And I'm pretty sure that's why I secured the job because we talked about World of Warcraft for at least 20 minutes during a 30 minute interview. Yeah, so this really? game sh shaped gaming a lot, especially our, you know, our current genre of MMOs. Like, it's, I played, um, God, I played EverQuest when it first came out, which was the granddaddy of them all, um, and then played Dark Age of Camelot, but Warcraft just brought smoothness and, um, oh God, what is it? A depth of play that the other games didn't have. It, and w this was around the time that Warcraft 3 was around. So people loved Warcraft and they wanted to see more of the world and more of the story. We won't talk about how it fell apart later on. But the vanilla version of this game, it set the bar so high that nobody's able been able to replicate the, the success that World of Warcraft has had. I'm not even saying just vanilla. Was. Vanilla BC Wrath of the Lich King was literally the best. Hands up rating was the funnest. Of any game, I probably ever had like in gaming, raiding and, and wrath. As far as on that, that was the funnest thing yep. I've probably ever done. We literally had like our our party house when I was in college. Like we would play Wednesday, we'd raid on Wednesday nights, and then we had like parties on Thursdays. But Wednesday nights, it was literally like fifteen of us, like, <laughs> like, like all together, or no, ten of us, ten of us. So we we raided ICC, ten of us, and then we had like a, our guildies kind of join in. But so ten of us in like this house, and we were all had like lands on a computer raiding ICCs. Like, just playing together. Like, I don't know, man. That's low. It just, again, it brings community. Like, this game brought a lot of community and the gaming community together again. Yep. Like, it just, it is the epitome of friendship as far as I'm concerned. You, your friends, raiding on a Friday night, trying to make some progress. And it created um, long-term relationships with people all across the world. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's something that resonates deeply within gaming society. I feel it belongs mm. higher on the list. Yeah, way too low. I don't care what else is on this list, right? Not, not I don't care what's on the list, but whatever else is up there, there's no reason that this isn't in the top 10. Yes, I agree. I don't know. Anyways, 39, Ooh, Star Wars, right. Night of the Old Republic, 2003. Did you play any Bioware games? Not really. I played a lot okay. of Star Wars uh, 64. Um, okay. I, pl I played a lot of that, like a lot, a lot. And that's probably like, one of my favorite like childhood games, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I played Knights of the Old Republic. I didn't get super into it. I don't okay. know. Okay. All right. So for me, this game is, a, again, like a, a piece of nostalgia that it, it, I will always come back to. I may not play it again, but it set the bar very, very high for... Um, rpg and it kind of set the framework for bioware's like 
discussion system and you know changing whether it be paragon virtue things of that nature like it kind of set the bar pretty mm -hmm. high for everybody to sit with um the characters were well thought out well developed it it, it felt there wasn't a good star wars game honestly in my opinion until this game you know what i mean yeah. like and this is you know around the time that like jade empire came out and we we're getting a lot of these like third person um squad based rpgs with heavy storytelling elements and a little bit of customization with how you did your skill trees and things of that nature and it just it satisfied a lot of itch in that it not groundbreaking but it set the bar high enough that it needs to be recognized for what it is and it's an exceptional game if you haven't played it i would play it it probably doesn't hold up super well you know this is original xbox game um but it is a fantastic game i love it to pieces 39 39 is fine. Yeah, I think it's appropriate. You okay with that? Okay. Yeah, I am. I'm very, I think it's appropriate. All right. I don't have much else to add to that one. Excited. I didn't play it a crazy amount, so. Fallout New Vegas. All right. Now, you don't play a whole lot of Fallout, do you? No. Fallout 4 was the first game I played. I've noticed that there's a lot of RPGs on this list, and Ivory's going to be like, listen, I just don't play this. All right, guys. So everyone's going to get really <laughs> triggered in the chat. Put it in the comments. Everyone's going to be really mad. I do not care about stories, okay, guys? I'm sorry. I just don't. I never have been that way. I'm a very competitive person. I want to be the best whenever I'm playing the game, and I want to get into it. More so lately, I don't care as much about that aspect, but I grew up on that. I played Halo, and you know what? I played some more Halo, and then some more Halo whenever I grew up. <laughs> <laughs> That's mainly what I did, okay, guys? So I played. I went to tournaments. That's what I did. Um, yes. Yeah, pretty much. But... In general, so I never got into storylines. I played Fallout 4. I had fun with it. Don't get me wrong. I th I think, yes. I don't know about New Vegas. I never played it. Just to be honest. I've watched it played. Um, 38 is probably fine. I mean, I'm okay with that. It's fine. Um, it's made by Obsidian, uh, who uh, did their own version. It was The previous one, Fallout 3, was done by ZeniMax, Bethesda. Uh, this is Obsidian's version. Uh, this game was better than three, um, and better than four. Honestly, if I'm being if I'm being real here, it's just better than both of those combined. It's a very rich environment. The characters are very organic. Um, you know, the the story is amazing. Um, the, you can even play in a hardcore mode, which is a survival mode where you have to watch your thir your wa your thirst, your hunger. You know, all of that stuff takes an effect. You have to sleep in order to not get fatigued or have other you know effects. Vegas has a lot to offer in regards to that. It has a lot of mods, too, and a lot of content just in general. 38 is a good place on the list. It's I think that's a good homage to it overall. Um, if you haven't played it, I recommend playing it. It still holds up. Worth every moment. Still still 38 is a good spot for it. Yeah. That's I'm, cool. I'm cool with it. Like I said, Vegas, I, I didn't play it. Fallout 4, I am cool. Like I, That was the first game I've actually really, like, I legitimately streamed the whole entire playthrough and I listened to all the dialogue and I like tried to immerse myself in the story. What did you think of it? Honestly, like, it, cause it, there's parallels between these. It may not be the same story, but it's the same kind of feel. I would say full. So, okay. So I'm a huge, huge oblivion and Skyrim fan. Huge. I can play the piss out of those games. Like, I'm sorry. I can, I did. And I still kind of do on Skyrim. I'll get back on and I get my get my fix. A little tweak, you know. Like Sky, Skyrim, man. It's, 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 been, it's, been, it's been a month. Got to get back on there. It's only been out for like eight years. But I need more. <laughs> but as far as the overall breakdown, though, like I love those games. Fallout 4, that's one of the first games I ever like sat down. I listened to all the dialogue. I, like I said, I, I streamed it for that exact reason because people made fun of me because I don't, I don't get too big into stories. I just never have. I just like to point and shoot, get through it, you know, go. Like I just like to be efficient. So, Even. as far as on story, I'll give it like an 8, like 7.88, okay. 8, somewhere in that area. Like, I think it has a good story, and I, I understand it, you know, and as far as on the overall Fallout breakdown, as far as on, that's what I was getting used to it, and getting used to the story, and people were explaining it to me, and New Vegas was referenced quite a bit, as far as on how the overall world worked, and as far as on the vaults, and as far as the differences, like which vault you were kind of coming out of, I guess, and, you know, I was kind of understanding the story then, but... It's cool. It's different, and I think the overall gameplay was good. So I don't know. We're talking about a different game, okay. obviously Fallout Four, but Fallout series I think was impactful. 
Okay. Either way. But, and this is this is just Obsidian's version of it. That's the reason why I asked, because you could draw parallels between them and be, and be fairly close. Okay, fair enough. All right. Final <sighs> Fantasy. Hmm? Final Fantasy VI. It's important to have the actual number afterwards. All That's right? a good like, point, like, yes. Okay. Because they're all different, and they're all... They're all different stories, and they all play different. All right, I'm going to hang myself right now. Final Fantasy overhyped, guys. You suck. <laughs> Get out of here. Boo this man off the stage. I, Boo him right I'm now. I'm not a Final Fantasy fan. I'm not. Oh, I don't get it. I do not get it. Heathen. Crucify him in the comments, please and thank you. As far as 37, it should be higher. As far as a whole, yes, like, I, I, I'm cool. I agree it should be higher as far as a, a world thing. Again, same concept. I do not understand it. Don't get the hype. I think it's awful. I, I think Final Fantasy is awful. I hate you. 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 Go ahead. Tell me about how much you love this game. Yeah, I will. I will. This game was the epitome of 90s freaking RPGs. Like, Earthbound was delicious and quirky and fun. Six puts it to shame. Six, like, what I enjoy about Final Fantasy IV slash two when i say that because it's japanese for american two and japanese six american three because that's it's, it's complex two. math guys but that checks it out complex math yeah, <laughs> it out. um and nobuyo imatsu did the soundtrack the sound is amazing there is a this is the first game where the bad guy wins <laughs> kid spoiler alert again wow again, this was hello i was gonna play final fantasy oh. six again thanks mm. uh didn't finish it up but he does win midway through, which is... Oh, much better now that he wins midway through. It doesn't spoil it for me. Yeah, whatever. You're not going to play it. Who cares about you? I played... Si hey, I played it. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. I did. I played... Yes, I did. What? Yes. You, and you don't like it? No. I played a, I played a lot of Final Fantasy games. AFK Hero, same thing. He, he's a huge Final Fantasy fan. So I played a lot of them because he liked them. He played it a lot. I played... I want to say all of them. I played a good chunk of them. I've also played the the MMO version as far as the new one, Final Fantasy right. Online or 14, yeah. I played that. I don't like them. I hate you. God, why am I doing this to myself? The MMO, I thought, that's a completely different subject. We won't get into it. It's just like, I don't know, WoW versus Final Fantasy, uh, that one, there, obviously. So, there's, but There's so many iconic moments from 3, from the opera scene to, or I should say 6, from the opera scene to meeting Gao in the the, uh, the planes, having the very first like ninja character that I absolutely adored. Uh, the story is amazing. The characters are in-depth and have heart. The music is out of this world. It's just a treat. And, and the gameplay is awful. 100 hours. Screw you! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I don't know, man. Story-wise, again, I didn't care about it. So, again, everyone hang me because yeah, I already know. I already cultures. know. I already know everyone is on your side. It's fine. Okay, like, I get are. that. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, everyone just come over and just stab me a few times. It's okay. <laughs> nope. We'll turn you into a water we're, we're on a different right? We're on a different planes there. Oh, Completely different. God, but, again, I am with you. Higher. Either way. See, you have to really respect that. I understand. I'm not saying, like, oh, it's a shitty game. Like, right. it shouldn't be the top 100. It should be higher. You it should be probably... What's a train? I'm saying... How can you not it, like should, it should be, like, top 20. And I don't know about six specifically. Maybe a certain game. As far as a genre, it should be top 10. Like, a genre as a whole. I'm, I'm cool with that. But, again, nothing, like, on me. That, not my taste. Fine. Okay. 36. Uh, <laughs> Mass Effect 2. Ooh, and more Pyroware love. A lot of RPGs in the top 30. I, re I respect that a lot, actually. Um, I think a lot of the RPGs, and yes, and I think in RPG-wise, I think a lot of these you're going to be seeing. It's just because it's so immersive, and you can really get into it. And I think for a lot of people, again, I'm not, the, not this way, but I understand that a lot of people get immersed in the stories. And I think Mass Effect probably did a really good job with it, to be completely honest. I think the overall story is different. And as far as di not different, like it was like, you know, oh, wow, like so, so different. But like as far as on an overall concept, like it just wasn't just kind of new to the time. I don't know. I, I think it's the main thing. I, I think the overall story and the overall gameplay was good. I, I really like the gameplay on Mass Effect. So I think this is uh, Bioware's like piece de resistance. Like this game for Bioware. Oh, resistance. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, like. 
It's is that what you put your chocolate frosting on? Is the croissants? Craft <laughs> Fault no. can't be the carrier of my chocolate frosting. It's gotta be a graham cracker. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. but it, it is i think it's the pinnacle of where they were as a company at the time and it still is to this day and holds up well the characters like you actually like get a feeling and feel uh, attached to them you know what i mean like some rpgs you don't feel attached to the characters you're like meh whatever um they don't have that same level of oomph I feel like at Mass Effect 2, I resonated with almost every character, and I wanted every character to live and have a happy life, you know what I mean? And, like, what I really am impressed with Mass Effect is that, like, if you didn't have, like, maximum loyalty or, you know, you didn't have a deep enough relationship with the characters, like, you couldn't get the best ending. It wasn't possible. So it really caused you to actually sit and think about, like, well, how am I going to get this person to deepen the relationship with me and become friends with me? Uh, from Thane to freaking Miranda and Tali and all of those guys. It's just, it was a lot of fun. It is my favorite of the Mass Effect series for good reason. And it's the first for, you know, for a lot of people. Um, it deserves its place in the list. And I, hmm. I honestly, this is a good spot for it at 36. I don't. Yeah, I'm cool. I don't think it should be higher than that. And I don't, it shouldn't be lower. Than that. I'm, I'm cool no, with where it's at. I, it, I think it's perfectly suited where it's yeah. at. It's very, very good. Pokemon Yellow, 35. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I didn't play Pokemon Yellow. I did. Uh, I, did you? What do you think? Are you, you, so you have it like. Uh, first know, of all, I'm that. curious where red and blue are. If that's yeah, if that's yellow, <laughs> I think. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you can interchange them as far as red, blue, yellow. Like I'm cool. Like I get that. I promise. I honestly thought yellow was the best. So I'm curious if red and blue are even on this list, which kind of scares me if it's not. Um, Thirty five. I don't understand because. I don't know. I mean, it depends on how you're looking at it. If you're taking a look at us from like a Pokemon, like this, like the overall series, like everything, right? Or just Pokemon Yellow as a game, because Pokemon Yellow as a game, to me, that was the first game, in my opinion, that probably came out that everyone was playing it. Everyone was playing Pokemon Yellow, Red, and Blue. Doesn't matter. That's when Game Boy came out as the first overall mobile device that everyone could kind of play on, and that's what the whole entire big thing was. There was nobody that you ran into who didn't fucking play Pokemon. Fantastic. Yeah, no, and you're not wrong. And I think Pokemon came out when I was a uh, freshman in high school. Yeah, I was, I was like seven or eight. <laughs> so, but no, no, no. I'm not saying like as like a, as a dig to age. I'm saying like, but even seven and eight, like that was big for me growing up. Like I grew yeah. up on Pokemon, like. I watched it. I watched it every morning before going to to, to school. Like it was uh, the anime was a lot of fun to watch. It was joyous. Like I picked up blue because Squirtle's best Pokemon. Don't at me because I'm right and you're wrong. Um, uh, Charizard, but yeah, no, no, Charizard's a chump. Want to be Fire Dragon? Get out of here! All right, guys, podcast uh, over. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, and I feel like yellow is what cemented Pikachu as kind of like the the mascot of Pokemon. You know what I mean? Like yes, yeah. Um, I feel like that's the face maybe of that's it. why he's the, he became the face of Pokemon, and that's this is maybe the reason why. Um, I mean, who doesn't like a little cute electric rat? I guess I don't. I'd rather have a water squirting turtle, but that's just me. I don't get thirty five. I don't understand it. That should be higher than that. Either. I'm not saying top ten, but top no. twenty five, top twenty, sure ish. Yeah, because it was very impactful. It was a brand new genre. Monster As, Pocket Monsters wasn't a thing before yeah, Pokemon. Could, yeah, and we're talking about a game, like a series wise. Yes, so guys. Again, this list is based off of a specific game. So Pokemon Yellow, top twenty five, top twenty. I'm cool with that. Like as a series, yeah. Then you're talking about like top five. Like yeah, it's a Pokemon, duh. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's but yeah, we're talking about games. So. All right. All right, fair enough. I didn't play yellow, so I don't really have a leg in that. You know, right. I don't have a horse in that race. I do in this one, though. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. This is going to be another one we're going to really disagree on. I can already tell. Oh, God. Let me guess. You're not a Dark Souls fan, are you? Go on. No, I don't. No, no. Bloodborne is the best of the Soulsborne game, and I'm going to get people who hate me for that. Dark Souls isn't the same. Game. Dark Souls is the same. No, <laughs> the Bloodborne. Same company. It doesn't matter. It's the same company. It's a different universe, isn't it? It doesn't matter. It's still done with the same company. It fall, it's called what? Soulsborn. It's called Soulsborn for a reason. No, no, no. Look at the screen. Bloodborne. I don't think it says Soulsborn. Guys, can you... Okay, comment below. <laughs> you're, you're, is, you're Dapper, pride, is Dapper's monocle maybe he needs to get it updated? Can't it see it. It's Bloodborne, but it is Soulsborn. Okay, I get you, but it's not the same universe. I don't agree with that. Go on. 
screw it. I don't I don't care what she's saying. No, you're fine. I'm saying go. <laughs> All right. So Bloodborne is my favorite of the Soulsborne like series, uh, uh, whether it be uh, Dark Souls three to freaking secure or whatever. Anyway, the combat is fluid. The game create has elements of HP Lovecraft and Eldritch Horror. The bosses are challenging and difficult. It's a much more fast paced gameplay. It took the Dark Souls formula and elevated it to the next level, as far as I'm concerned. And that's why three incorporates a lot of aspects from Bloodborne into it. And it needed to, honestly, because it was too slow otherwise, especially after the abomination that frickin' two was. But we won't go into that. Uh, Bloodborne. It brings gothic to horror to Rippin' and Terran Avia Doom. It's just a good time. And it's also the game that made me rage quit on PS4. I bought it specifically for the PS4, right? I bought my PS4. I bought Bloodborne. I played it to the first optional boss, lost, almost broke my controller, turned it off, and didn't play it for five years. And then I went back and played it, and now it's my favorite game of all time. Okay. Bloodborne and Dark Souls as a as a as a whole, I as a blanket statement, blanket statement, awful series, absolutely terrible. I do not understand. Like as far as story, I don't know because I never understood the story when I played them. Like at least I didn't. I didn't even follow it myself. Let alone that I just didn't care about stories a whole lot. I just. I just. I don't know. I, I didn't even see the point of where they were trying to like connect things. I, I can't process this information. No, no. I'm. I'm just saying. Like and like and I played Dark Souls two the most, and I understand it's the worst one. Like I get that, and I played that with my friend. Like I, and I've heard that, and he said the same exact thing. He bought the game for me because he really wanted me to try Dark Souls because I always made fun of it when I watched him because it looked awful. And I thought the overall game, he's like, oh, man, it's the hardest thing in the world. Like, dude, there's nothing hard about this. You literally just be patient and not be stupid. And that's the game. And he just always got so pissed off at me because of that. So he literally bought Dark Souls 2 for me. We played Dark Souls 2. I went through that whole entire game. Didn't die once. Not once. I understand. It's the easiest. It's the easiest of Dark Souls. And bear in mind, I was playing with him. We played because that was the first time. Right was Dark Souls 2. It was either two or three, because uh, I played both. Two, uh, two and multiplayer. Yes, co-op. okay, so we played as a co-op. So there was some leadway on the first two or three bosses that he explained it to me, and I, so I understood. And then he got upset because I wasn't dying. So then he literally just, like, told me where to go and where I needed to go to go through the story because I wasn't listening to the story, <laughs> just to be honest with you. But aside, aside from that point, he was just telling me, like, okay, go to this boss, and that, now you fight this boss. But literally, that game was so stupid easy. I don't understand, like, why people had so much problems with it. Or not game. Bloodborne. I challenge you to put in Bloodborne. I want to see you just not die. And Bloodborne, I'm not saying, like, a not die. I'm just saying, like, in general, because Dark Souls 2 is the easiest. And I, I understand that. I, I've heard that. And that's fine. Like, I, I, that's okay. But in general, like, the whole entire process is just be patient. Watch the boss's mechanics learn the mechanic, don't get hit while you're learning the mechanic, and then take one simple jab at a time, take 10 minutes to kill the boss, and you do it. Guess what? That's what exactly what I did. No, it's not a heroic way to play the game. But again, me from a competitive standpoint, and I didn't want to die to prove it to him that it was stupid. <laughs> so it was more like, you know, me just eh, nudge type of thing. I don't know. I just, I don't understand the hype behind the game because that was the hype was the complex nature of it and that it was supposed to be hard and i didn't get that i did not understand that it just sounds like one bad experience ruined the whole kettle for you like that's no because i played dark souls 2 and 3 and i did not play dark souls 1 i i didn't i didn't touch it i watched it because my buddy played it a lot but right and i played bloodborne is a nice is a nice mix of bloodborne and two or i should say one rather because two is trash was it wasn't even done by their a team but um, I just it just flabbergasts me that you can say that about this beauty of a game. It's, it's okay. I, I understand that everyone likes it. That's cool. I'm cool with where it's on the not list. Everyone, but I would say a healthy majority. Okay, not not everyone. everyone. Okay, you're fair. I, okay, not everyone. Like I'm cool with where it's out on the list, though. Is my point. I don't have a. Of course, fine. I, okay I don't have a point. Where it's at. Yeah, I don't have a problem I, with that. Be higher than that. I just it, to me, it's one of the best games I've ever played, and it's in the top ten of personal games that I've played. And actually, I should say, like I said before, it's my favorite. It's my favorite. Nope, not even top one hundred for me. <laughs> <laughs> Heathen. Moving on. Blood for Metroid Prime. Ooh, okay. All right. Did you play Metroid at all? Yes. Um. Which ones? I played Metroid Prime. And as far as on, that's probably the one that I played the most. Because it's GameCube, right? 
Yes, it's game. Okay, game. yeah. So I played Metroid Prime. Uh, that was probably the one I spent the most time on, anyways. In general, I didn't play a crazy amount of the other ones. Like I just kind of touched them because I never bought the game, so I played it whenever I was with my friends, like at their house. Um, yeah. I'm surprised by 33. I think I don't think it should be that high. I guess myself, really? I, I don't understand that. I would say like yeah. top 50, but like you know, 48, 50, somewhere in that range. I think Prime is uh, because it's a new. It was there hadn't been a uh, a Metroid game I think since Super Metroid at that time. Yeah, because that was like in the 80s, Prime. wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. That was Super yeah. Nintendo. So I didn't play those because I was too young for that. In the 90s, yeah. Um, but the game came out and it was actually really interesting because it was a first person version of um, what was originally just a side scroller. You know what I mean? It was a yeah. side scroller adventure. So it kind of broke ground in that regard. Um, it is still one of the best like Metroid games out there, as far as I'm concerned. Like Super Metroid's probably number one. Uh, Metroid Prime for me comes in like a number two slot. 33, I think, is good. I think it, since it broke the mold for what Metroid is uh, when it first came out, I think this is a deserved slot for it. I mean, it came out in 2002, quite a while ago, about 10, you know, was it uh, eight, eight years ago? No, 2002. Math is hard sometimes, 18 years ago. Dapper, um, <laughs> sorry. stop oh. pretending. <laughs> My boomer brain. Um, <laughs> <laughs> eight carry the wait, one yep yeah, exactly. oh Remember, man oh, that really God. is complex math but <laughs> wait no 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 it doesn't check out wait a second quick, quick maths um <laughs> it's just it was it's an excellent game 33 though is fine i don't i don't think it deserves any higher than 33 i don't think it should be higher I, I mean maybe i'm okay with that i say it depends on what else is on this list but i mean i don't know i'm, not, I'm just surprised at that i don't know i would say uh, top 50 enough. but maybe not that high i don't know a good game. Nothing wrong with it. I don't know, but yeah. yeah. Resident Evil Four. I think we've already talked about Resident Evil. I mean, I'm not really gonna get. Well, I don't yeah, care. I, I don't care to talk about each individual game. Like I'm cool no, with 32. I, I'll, I'll talk just uh, briefly. Like Resident Evil Four. I don't understand everybody's fascination with Four. It's an okay game. This is the I biggest one, so this should it. be the highest, right? Like I, yeah, I've always exactly. heard that as Resident Evil yeah. Four. Like it's gotten the most hype and it's got the most backing behind it. I. Maybe I didn't spend enough time with it. I don't know. It wasn't my cup of tea. It's a. It was a third person rather than a third person shooter rather than like the the isometric top down almost yeah. top down like a three quarter view like adventure kind of game. I don't know. It doesn't. I, I don't agree with this slot. I think it should be lower on the list. I.e. like you know seventy or something like that. It's a good game. I think it's just overhyped. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. Not much to say. Resident Evil. We talked about it a lot earlier. Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, this is a good spot for it, and I think it's well-deserved. Never played it, so go ahead. Um, it's a puzzle game, action game. Uh, think Legend of Zelda meets, uh, like, uh, just giant colossi. Like, in that picture there, that's an actual, like, that's you literally standing on the ground, and that's the average size of a colossi. Well, I saw you saying I was the big guy because I'm such no, a big guy. No, you are not. You are the little big man boy. on campus. <laughs> <laughs> little guy. Um, it, it told a story without this game much sounds sense. really easy if i'm the big guy <laughs> right exactly but like so you're trying to save your i think it's your lover um it had a horse that everybody loved his name was aggro which was i thought was great did he, he go aggro it, uh, i think he more like drew aggro <laughs> um, so he's dog meat got it <laughs> every col exactly every colossus felt different and so it was a different fight and a different style which was really kind of cool it kept it fresh and it told a lot of story without saying a lot in words and okay. has a lot of heart touching and, and heart wrenching scenes like it's just a very well crafted story overall which is obviously probably why you won't like it that much the action portions of it i never played it i didn't say i didn't like it i and said i've never played it you might not like it is because Jeez, he's like making assumptions guys he's just like wow Listen, <laughs> this idiot isn't gonna like this other games that like are near to my heart you have no foot go away shoo be gone satan um <laughs> <laughs> the uh, so i think it's deserved at 31 i think it was groundbreaking for the time that it was in it was a wonderful action game uh done by the folks who also did ico um or eco however you want to pronounce it it, it it's yeah it's do sex there. yep do sex. <laughs> <laughs> all right metal gear solid personal feelings aside it deserves to be in 30 i don't like i'm with you personal ceilings i don't understand why it's this high i'm agreeance I, I think it Sure, like, 30. I never understood Metal Gear Solid, though. 
is an amazing writer and director of works. I just don't understand him. I don't understand what he's trying to say in 98% of this stuff. It seems always very convoluted and freaking intricate when it doesn't need to be. It's like somebody took J.R.R. Tolkien and then added an additional like backstory layer for every single thing that was ever written. Like there's just a well, stopping point. I don't need any more. And even just for gameplay, like, I don't know, Metal Gear Solid, like I guess what I grew up on, like Tom Clancy's like stuff. Yeah, I thought that was much more intricate as far as from the standpoint of like spy kind of shooting type s game and Metal Gear Solid I felt was like a weird awkward hybrid of trying to meet two different worlds at the same time and I thought that was odd the gameplay wise I enjoyed playing Metal Gear Solid on PS1 I thought it was a great game um but I don't think I would. I mean, 30 is fine. It's just they're not my cup of tea, honestly, guys. I can see why it's here. It just is. I see, now really everyone's going to hate both of us now. <laughs> That's fine. I knew I was going to take a hit somewhere. This one is it. This is the one I take the hit on. <laughs> I took a hit everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 29, God of War. I, okay, so this one, I, I needed to be specific, and I see that it's the 2018 version. This game is phenomenal. Uh, it's redefined God of War as a franchise. The story is impeccable. The action is amazing. It is. It deserves 29, and uh, I, I don't think it deserves much more than 29. It is an exceptional game. It brought, in 2018, one of the best games. I think it even won Game of the Year, or at least close. It was very high up there. It deserves a spot on this list. It's engrossing from beginning to end. It's the first game I ever platinumed on freaking PlayStation. Primo is Primo. good stuff. Croissant. <laughs> Croissant. Uh, yeah, I'm cool with 29. I think in general, the overall graphics of the game is very visually uh, pleasing as far as on the overall breakdown. They took a lot of time into it. I thought that was uh, nice, at least, because you talk about like a lot of the new 2018 games, 2019. It's kind of whenever you're starting to see a lot of these visually impactful games. And I think God of War kind of at the top tier echelon as far as in 2018 area. Um, you know, obviously there's some more stuff coming out, just technology changes, so it's not really their fault. Um, but I think they put a lot of work into that, and I think the overall gameplay was really well. I think difficulty about it was good, too. Like, it was actually yeah. at least, like, interesting. It, was it wasn't just, you know, fight and pretty simple play it through, like, on just basic, you know, normal settings. Like, it was just, it actually had some raw meat to it, you know, like, it was actually yeah. challenging. It so, was, it, like the Valkyries? Did you fight all the Valkyries? Did you yes. fight them all? Uh, oh, no, because I was playing on a different friend's uh, account. I was playing on his account, so I didn't play the whole entire game all the way through. But if you if you ever got a chance, to, I would recommend playing it all the way through and doing the Valkyries because those fights are intense yeah. and they're wonderful. But um, yeah, this game is good. Twenty nine. I'm cool. Twenty nine. I'm good with that. Yep. We First, skip something. Twenty eight. Twenty eight. God, you suck. Twenty eight. <laughs> Bioshock. It's, 20, it's gone. Twenty. Okay. I can read it. Twenty-seven on the left -hand side there. It, Wait, it's on really? the left-hand side. Yeah, they have it in the. Can I click on? There it is. You can click on it at least. Where? On the left-hand sidebar, underneath like the hundred games of all time, where the comments is. Oh, okay. The Witcher Three. Just click on the Witcher Three Wild Hunt. I covered uh, up you for a second to look at it. <laughs> fine. Fine. Well, screw it. We'll do it live. We'll do it. Li We're doing it live. So, Wild Hunt deserves its spot at 28. 28 is a fantastic spot for it. This game is phenomenal. Pure paragraph and a sentence. I still haven't had the chance to play it yet. Uh, I've only played like 30 hours of it, and this game is probably like 300 hours. <laughs> so... Yeah, I've heard really good things, and I've watched it play. I've watched probably about 30 hours. I mean, that's probably, I've probably watched people play it for about 30 hours. Yep. I think it looks really good, and I think the, the overall gameplay, go yeah, the combat looks really, really, really good, honestly, as far as on any game that I've kind of watched. I don't know. I don't really have much of a take on it, though. I, th I think it's okay the, where it's the, at, though. The story is impeccable. The characters are memorable. The art, the storytelling elements are fantastic. CD Projekt Red knocked it out of the friggin' park with the Witcher series, and that's why I'm so hyped for Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, the, and for anybody who didn't Red know, Red that actually got pushed back. Yeah, so ruining your lives <laughs> it didn't 
ruin anything. I'm okay with the politics. I'm okay too because right? I, I think it is, if you're going to make a game good, make it good. Like, I don't care. Wait and next month. Well, and few months. I don't think they can take a risk with that because the hype surrounding it is, like, enormous. Yeah, that's true. So. Anyways, Witcher 3. Hunt, yeah, Witcher 3 definitely deserves it. It has some of the biggest DLC that I've ever played. A heart and, what is it? Uh, Wine and Blood, I think, is just as big as the actual main game of Witcher 3. So. And waiting for the game of Witcher 3, I think you could spend 100 hours, and that game, the the DLC, you could spend another 100. You know what I mean? Like, mm. it's just that large. I, and I'm, I'm making, I'm pulling numbers out of my butt. I'm not going to lie to you folks, but that's my um, estimation of what this is capable of doing. And if you have some time and really want a deep, meaty RPG, play The Wild Hunt, and it deserves its slot at 28. I think out of your butt in deep, meaty RPG. I think that <laughs> sentence would really fit together, but you made it work. <laughs> 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 okay, number 27. Moving on, Kappa Pride. <laughs> Bioshock. Bioshock, I feel, deserves to be higher. Uh, Bioshock I do not. Nope. Uh, Bloodborne's my number one game of all time. Bioshock is number two. And it, the reason is, is because the story in Bioshock blew my effing mind. Weirdly enough, I like the story a little bit. I'm not too big into stories, but that game forced you to play the story, in my opinion. So I'd, I'd had to follow it to actually understand because otherwise I got really confused and didn't know where to go. Figured that out within like 10 minutes of playing it. <laughs> um, like you will enjoy this, you chump. How dare you please I, and try and get out of listening to the story? I disagree. Don't think it should be higher. I'm okay with kind of where it's at as far as an overall game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got anything else to add? I don't, I don't like it. I don't like Power Shock. I, and I don't like you. <laughs> I don't know. It just wasn't like the enemies were fantastic. The I the big daddies the first time I ever saw one, and they make you fight it. I was horrified. Like you see these things in the the cutscenes and things of that nature, and you're like, these are big baddies you do not want to mess with. It really gets to the heart of the characters. And it like, just wasn't challenging and... though. Well, no, I mean, the game itself could be boiled down to shock and wrench. Yeah. Like, that's literally all you needed to beat the game. But I played it for the story. Like, I'm one of those people that can forgive a lot of things in the gameplay aspects if the story really grips me. And this game gripped me. It, it didn't okay. Like, and the scene with Andrew Ryan and the freaking golf club and Would You Kindly blew my mind. Blew it to smithereenies. And I will forever be grateful to that game for that it was one of the highlights of my gaming I'm, career i'm cool with where it's at on the list i don't think it should be higher either way it should be around 20-ish maybe maybe 21 but that's my take i'm cool with 20 to 30 i don't care where it's at in that area but sure like i'm, I'm just all cool right. with where it's at all right all right Moving on. 26 civ huh civ uh i don't actually don't have a horse in this race i think uh, as far as on <laughs> civ you're talking about like an overall like actual resource kind of very in depth kind of RTS. Builder? Yeah. yeah, I mean for the most part, I mean like your overall breakdown though in Sev a uh, Civ, as far as I, I don't really care about talking about the specific game, like I said, as far as a series, um I'm cool with twenty six. I think it's a it's a very I think it's a very good game. Yeah. And I think as far as a whole, like it was probably one of the first games it was just very, very in depth with how you could actually be um kind of competitive about it, maybe to the point that it kind of <laughs> I want to say killed the game, but like it's just very in depth. I don't know. To me, it was just different. I but mean, if you're playing it like multiplayer and competitive, like this is equivalent to playing Monopoly with your family and getting yeah, mad. Yeah, that's that's actually a really walk. yes, that's a really good way. I played it with a few <laughs> friends in general, and it's very uh, it pisses you off in a lot of different scenarios. <laughs> um, it really does. But I don't know. Gandhi it's... comes in with the nukes when he hits. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm I'm cool with that it's on the list. I mean, I don't really have much else to add. I mean, it's it's a fun no, game. I, I think it's, it's worth fine. playing it if you haven't ever played it. It's a, it's basically just a real time. Uh, what like I don't know like like ri risk in Monopoly is the best way I can really describe it. Like it's like a good habit of that. And as far as on the overall, it's just turn based. You just try and get the overall uh, upper hand and collect as far as the overall land as much as you possibly can. Basically, defeat your enemies. Like that's yeah whole entire breakdown. Nothing too crazy. But all right, guys, just in general, that's the overall uh, top 50 as far as we'll be stopping at number 26. Uh, as far as our next podcast, we'll be doing the top 25. So in general, make sure to like and subscribe to be able to follow us for the overall content, to be able to see everything uh, for the next podcast and all of our other future podcasts. And uh, in general, do you have anything to add, Dapper? 
Uh, you know, and also in the comments, you know, let us know what you think is going to be in the top 10 or even the top 25. And what are some of the games that you feel maybe that aren't on this list that you, you know, as, at least in the top 50 to 25 that you feel should have been somewhere in there? We'd love to hear from you. So don't ever feel, you know, bad for commenting. Let us know. And even if you have some constructive criticism, you know, throw it down there. We would love to hear from you guys and find out what we can do to improve. All right. In the meantime, stay classy, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video. All right. Thanks, guys.